So I'm going to read the book Star Wolf. Star Wolf. I need to be able to actually say the name. Edmund Hamilton Star Wolf. The complete, the classic space trilogy. Adventure trilogy, even. Apparently I missed out on the classic space adventure trilogy as I never heard of it. But I figured I'd pick it up because, you know, what the hell, why not? Well, it's amazingly well written. I mean, ama it's, yeah, it's, it's a classic. So... I figured I'd try reading uh, the first two chapters and seeing if I could do something interesting with it because, you know, why the hell not? So, Edmund Hamilton Star Wolf, the classic space adventure trilogy, chapter one, page one. The stars watched him, and it seemed to him that they whispered to him, Die, Star Wolf, your course is run. He lay across the pilot chair. And the dark veils were close around his brain, and the wound in his side throbbed and burned. He was not conscious. He knew that his little ship had come out of overdrive, and that they were things that he should do. But it was no use. No use at all. Let it go, Star Wolf. Die. In the corner of his mind, Morgan Chan knew that it was not in the stars that were talking to him. It was some part of himself that still wanted to survive, and that was still haunting him, prodding him, trying to get him onto his feet. But it was easier to ignore it and to lie here. Easier, yes. And how happy his death would make his dear friends and loving comrades. Chan's fogged mind held on to that thought. It finally... It brought a dull anger and a resolve. He would not make them happy. He would live. And someday, he would make those who were now hunting him very unhappy indeed. The savage determination seemed to clear the blur of darkness a little from his brain. He opened his eyes and then slowly and painfully, he hauled himself erect in the seat. The action pulled at his wound sickeningly and for a few minutes he fought against nausea. Then he reached out a shaky hand toward a switch. He must first find out exactly where he was, and where the last desperately hasty course he had set as he fled had brought him. Like little red eyes, figures glowed on the board as the computer silently answered his question. He read the figures, but his brain was not clear enough to translate them. Shaking his head drunkenly, he peered at the viewplate. A mass of blazing stars walled the firmament in front of him. He pilled the sun, high piled suns, smoky red, pure white, pale green, and gold, and peacock blue glared at him. Great canyons of darkness rifted the star mass, rivers of cosmic dust out of which gleamed the pale witch fires of down suns. He was just outside of a cluster. And now Chan's blurred mind remembered that in the last desperate moment of flight, when he threw his stolen ship into overdrive before blacking out, he had jabbed the coordinates of Corvus Cluster. Blackness. Nothingness. The eternal solemn silence of the void. And the suns of the cluster pouring their mighty radiance upon the tiny needle that was his ship. His memory quickened, and he knew now why he had come here. There was a world that he knew about in the, this gigantic hive of stars. He could lie up there and hide, and he sorely needed such a refuge, for he had no heel lamp, and his wound would take time to heal naturally. He thought he would be safe on that world if he could reach it. Unsteadily, Chen set a course, and the little ship hurtled toward the edge of the cluster at the top speed of its normal drive. The darkness began to dim on his brain again, and he thought, No! I have to stay awake, for tomorrow we raid the Hades. But that could not be right. They had hit the Hades months ago. What was the matter with his memory? Things jumbled and without sense of sequence. Sweeping out of Varna, in their swift little squadron, running down the Sagittarius Passage and criss-cutting Owl Nebula, 
to come down in a surprise swoop on the fat little planet with a fat little people who squealed and panicked when he and his comrades hit their rich towns. Dot, 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 dot. But that had been a long time ago. Their last raid, the one where he had got this wound, had been uh, to Sandor 5. He remembered on the way there, they had been spotted and chased by a squadron of heavies, and he had escaped them by slamming right through a star system at full speed and normal drive. He could remember Sassander laughing and saying, They won't take the chances we Varnans take. That's why they'll never catch us. But Sassanda is dead, and I killed him. And that is why I'm flying for my life. It flashed across Chan's mind. He remembered the quarrel over the loot on Shandor 5, and how Sassander had got furious and tried to kill him, and how he killed Sassander instead, and how, wounded, he fled from the Avengers. Dot, 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 dot. The dark veils had cleared away, and he was here in his little ship, still fleeing, hurtling toward the cluster. He stared at it, sweat on his dark face, his black eyes wild. He thought he had better stop blacking out, or he would not have long to live. The hunters were after him, and there was no way in the galaxy he would give aid to a wounded star wolf. Chan had aimed to enter the cluster at a point where one of the dark dust rivers divided it, and he was already passing the outpost sentinel suns. Soon he could hear the tick and whisper of dust against the hull. He was keeping out of the dense or drift, and the particles were not much bigger than atoms. If, at these speeds, he met particles much bigger, they would hull the ship. Chan got into his suit and helmet. It was a prolonged effort, and the pain of it was as such that he had to set his teeth to keep from groaning. It seemed to him that the wound was much more agonizing than it had been. But there was no time to look at it. The heel patch that he had put over it would have to do for now. Up the great, dark, dusty river between the cluster stars went the little ship, and often Chan's head sagged against the board. But he kept his course. The dust might prove death for him, but it could be life. For those who had come hunting could not probe far in it. The viewplate was blurred and vague now. It looked like a window, but it was a complex mechanism, functioning through a probe rays far faster than light, and his probes had little range here. Chan had to keep all his attention on the dimness ahead, and that was hard with the wound throbbing in his side, and the dark fingers always reaching for his brain. Stars loomed up in the dust, burning like muffled torches, angry red and yellow suns, and the tiny ship slowly passed. A deeper spot of brooding darkness, a dead sun, lay far ahead to zenith, and became a somber star mark that he seemed to approach with unnatural slowness. The dim river and the stars twisted a little, and Chan changed course. The hours went on and on, and he was well inside the cluster, but it was a long way yet. Dot, 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 Chan dreamed. The good days, the morning days, the now had so suddenly ended. The going forth from Varna of the little ships that were everywhere so dreaded. The slamming out of overdrive and the swoop upon a city of a startled world. And the warning cry across the suns. The Star Wolves are out! and the mirthful laughter of himself and his comrades as they went in, mocking the slow sluggishness of those who resisted. Go in fast, and take the plunder, and beat down those who tried to stop you. Fast, fast, and away to the ships again, and finally back to Varna. With the loot and wounds and high-hearted triumph, the good days, dot, dot, dot. Could they really have ended for him? Question mark. Chan thought about that, and fed the fires of his swollen anger. 
but no matter what they said, he was one of them, as strong, as swift, as cunning as any of them, and a time would come when he would prove it. But for now, he must hide, lie concealed until his wound bettered, and soon he would reach the world where he could do that. Again, there was a turning of the dark river, the dust rifting deeper into the cluster. More the baleful witch stars went by, and the dust whispered louder on the hull. Far ahead, a glazed, dim eye of bloody orange watched his ship approach. And presently Chan could make out the planet that moved lonesome around the lonely dying star. And he knew it was the planet of his refuge. He almost made it. Well, that's the end of chapter one. I'm not even going to read two because, man, the sentence structure in this book is weird. So, I don't know. If you guys dug it, I could keep reading. And if you do, I will do chapter two and three. And then if that keeps going, I mean, I'll keep doing them. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed Edmund Hamilton's Starwolf, the classic space adventure trilogy.